it's common in .NET to pass the name of a property into a function. And there are three common ways you will see this in code. The first is the oldest style, simply passing a string with the name. That's a poor solution because if you rename the property, this is going to be out of sync. To solve that, another common pattern is to use the name of keyword. In that case, if you rename the property, it will also rename the parameter and you're a lot safer. The third approach and the approach that you want to see in this video is how to pass it by a lambda. For example, in this case, we're going to pass in x dot age as the property we need. And then we want to extract that value age inside the method. To begin, we need to create a new method also on property changed. And this time we're going to take in an expression and that expression will contain a function in our case, a Lambda, and that function is going to have example as the class. That's the class we're inside. And then we're going to provide T. T is the return type. It's the return type on this case of age. In our example, it happens to be an optional int, but it could be anything. And so we make that a generic parameter. So this will work with all parameters inside the class, no matter what their return type is going to be. We make that an action parameter, and then we have something to start working with. Our first line of code is to take the body of the action and then cast it to what we know it will be. We know it will be a member expression. As you can see here, we're going to access a member of the parameter x. And so therefore, we can safely cast it to what we know it will be. And then the second action is once we have that expression, we're just going to ask it for its member name. The member name is really just the property name. So that makes it very easy. In this case, we're just going to reuse our existing on property changed and pass in the property name so that we can output the name that came in. This is the simplest approach. It's only two lines of codes, very straightforward. The downside is it doesn't really double check to make sure that the Lambda you pass in is of the right shape. We just assume that it's going to be a single value, which is the property. But as long as you stick to that pattern, this is going to work quite nicely. Let's double check that it works. Let's add some starting code. We're going to create an instance of example. And we're going to change the value to 42. And doing so, we'll invoke property changed three times. And if it works, we should get the name age all three times. And there we go. It worked as expected. I'll post those two lines of code into the description below so it's easier for you to copy it out. And until next time, keep on coding.